when you refuse to reuse it's the earth you abuse hello good evening everyone i am tanushi and with immense pleasure and gratitude i would like to extend my warm welcome to all present here for the inter international webinar series all on all you need to know about e waste on the behalf of dg saksha so before proceeding with the webinar let me take a brief moment for the introduction of my organization dg saksha is an initiative of sames group a global marketplace for learning and teaching online where students are learning new skills and achieving their goals by motto learning for an over 300 plus courses in multiple languages which range from 4 hour to 6 months in various sectors of it bfsi retail and entrepreneurship for all age groups from school children to youth professional to senior citizens under the expert supervision dg saksham has also conducted more than 150 webinars 10 plus fdps and workshops seven international conferences workshops and seminar across the globe so let us know about today's session topic which is all you need to know about evals a popular informal name for electronic products nearing the end of their useful life computers televisions vcrs stereos copies and fax machines are common electronic products many of these products can be reused refurbished or recycled so to guide all us of through this we have mr michael michael rada so we welcome you sir mr Thank michael you very much. mr michael rada is an experienced business professional occupied with 30 plus years of rich business factory worker he has started his business career as a steel factory worker he invented and developed any systematic waste preventation methodology called industrial upcycling and started to implement it in the real business the beginning of operating industry 5.0 and industrial upcycling prevented already more than 1 million tons of product to become waste mr rada is only an inventor he develops implements and share his knowledge through education worldwide to fulfill his aim to build wasteless world Mr Rada is the author of more than 3000 articles blogger and networker and was rewarded best preventation company in 2016 CEO of the year 2018 best preventation best industrial upcycling company 2018 and best preventation project innovator of the year 2020 and more than that Mr Rada is a public speaker delivering his speeches at event seminar in schools and university his wake up calls leave a deep impression on the audience being delivered physically on the stage or virtually through any other online media in his speeches he delivers insight into his own work and development of industry 5.0 and realizes his project since 2015 his role as a keynote speaker enriches more than 50 events in several countries including france slovakia latvia india malaysia austria and many more his dedication to delivering results makes him part of many projects changing the business environment not only on a local but but on a global scale so now everyone with a huge round of applause please welcome mr michael rada to take over today's event we would love to hear from you sir welcome sir please thank you very much for the warm introduction i am really happy to be with all of you and please be informed that there is more than 100 people at the moment listening and i am sure the number is not the final one so there was only one thing not said but i will do it in the introduction because as it was said that i started my career as a steel factory worker and still i spend more time in a boiler suit then with a tie around my neck and because of that i am speaking with a, with a simple language and i hope you will understand this language we call it with industry 5.0 we call it the language of efficiency and i hope this is the language which you will enjoy same as me so the ladies and gentlemen let me welcome you to today's keynote which is named industry 5.0 the end of e-waste my name is mike rada i am a human and this is the only title which you will find on my business card despite the fact that i am the founder of industry 5.0 as well but before we start let me ask you two questions the first one is who we are because we have collected during our lives many titles we are students we are influencers we are celebrities politicians we are voters leaders fathers mothers patients but as well we are users or even some call us 
ID numbers. But with all these titles, we are forgetting one. We are human beings, living ones, not just a digital numbers or avatars. And if we do realize who we are, let me ask you the second question. Where do we live? Because we live in beautiful cities like Roubaix, Pilsen, Paris, Brussels. We live in beautiful cities which we filled with trash. We work in factories which produce in one day more trash than a city in a month. We produce products which frequently before reaching the end user become trash, trash as well. And we store them in big metal houses full with air, calling for more big metal houses for waste storage to be built. And at the end of our shift, we leave next to the output of our production and we go home. And maybe we realize that something what was called food before is called bio waste today. And we look at the red sky above our heads and we are asking ourselves, where do we live? I will answer this question in a while. But before I do so, let me share with you a few facts which you probably never realize or think about. Do you know that e-waste is younger than your parents? Do you know that we are not living in an ice age, but we are living in a waste age? And have you realized that carbon emission trading is the biggest crime which ever has been committed against the planet and nature? You and me, we are count ac accountable for the damage. And the giants which do the damage ask us to change without changing themselves. But what you know is that you are born as human and you will live as human as well. So what is needed is to live like human. And if we speak about e-ways, have you ever think that new Tesla car or a smart city equipment would be e-ways as well? What is the existing reality? I was born on December 24, 1971. On this Christmas day, the planet was called Blue Marble. But in 2019, it was not blue anymore. It was covered with environmental damage, with smoke, and we cannot see the blue anymore. But then something strange happened. At the beginning of 2020, in some destination, the blue sky show up again without the man changing his behavior. There was only one change. A small wires lock us down behind the doors. And at that moment, the blue marble show up again. And this is the planet on which we are living. We are living on a planet around which we have been able to create global space landfill on the orbit with more than 170 million pieces of waste, most of them e-waste. We are living on a planet in which we dig inside hunting for only criteria of success, which is called more. No matter what, more money, more people, more businesses, more houses, more cars, ask Fortune 500 members, ask the people why they have been selected, ask the leaders of the world, what is the only criteria of success? Ask Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mike Bloomberg, Bill Gates. We are living on a planet together with 7.95 billion people at the moment, not knowing that 200 years ago it was just 1 billion. And 100 years ago was 1.5, which means despite of two world wars, two war pandemics, and more than 650 war conflicts, there are five times more people living on a planet. And in 2050, some predicts 11 billion people should be living here. And just now, please remember the last image I showed you. We are living on a planet in 206 countries, according to UN 193. We are speaking 7,000 languages, riding 1 billion cars. And we let 9 million people die hungry, despite the fact that every single day is being wasted 23 million metric tons of food and crop. We let 800,000 people die thirsty every single year, despite the fact that only California crude oil industry consume every single day more than 347 million liters of drinking water. We plant our plants and food to throw it away because for the buyer, our leaves are not green enough. We put our overproduction in the rivers and on the landfills 
not to spoil the market price. We carry our water in firefighting tanks, not knowing that the same amount of water is needed to produce just one and simple hamburger. And we do it on a planet on which even one sip of water can save not one, but two lives. We are storing our packaging, which we do not need, on a parking lot for employees waiting till it becomes waste. We are working in factories which has walls filled with environmental certificates and behind the wall, the same factory is creating a landfill. We are throwing away things which are not perfect for one because of having seven issues inside. But the same products can serve hundreds and thousands of others. We are listening to the words of World Bank, which says that till 2050, the waste volume should increase. In some destination, it should double. Despite the fact that almost everything can be reused or repurposed, but in fact, only 13.5%, according to the same report by World Bank, is being reused. This is what makes waste industry the third most profitable industry in the world, just after the war industry and crude oil industry. And this is what makes our garbage bins full with food, which can be eaten. But instead of then, that it's thrown away as a waste. Maybe you will be surprised about the e-waste development, because if you look at Wikipedia, what is e-waste? You will find out that it is electronic waste or e-waste described as discarded electrical or electronic devices. But the second sentence is even more interesting on Wikipedia, because it says it's used electronic, even destined for refurbishment or reuse but all should be called e-waste. And the third information you will not find in Wikipedia, you have to dig a little bit deeper because you will find that firstly in 1976, e-waste was recognized as waste and it was in the US. It took 13 years till it became global thanks to Basel Convention, which generally declared the dangerous waste. And what is interesting that from the moment when we start, when the politicians start to speak about the need to care about e-waste, e-waste become the most growing waste segment in the world. And it is until now. What is Industry 5.0? It is the first industrial evolution ever led by man, by human. It is based on the principles of systematic waste prevention called industrial upcycle. And it recognizes and prevents four types of waste, physical, social, urban, and process waste. It was born on December 1st, 2015, and definition was published on February 3rd, 2017. And it is till today, it is the only existing definition of Industry 5.0. On August 21st, 2020, the age of Industry 5.0 started in India with one and only keynote speech delivered by me on CEIN conference that year. Two months later, the very first Industry 5.0 ambassador was assigned in India. Rif Shivrao Chala is the man who until now keep the flag and is on the gate to wasteless world in India. On January 7, 2021, European Commission adopted Industry 5.0 and included it in European Sustainable Development Framework. And some months later, in October, United Nations Panel on World Investment Forum told the same topic. And on January 1st, 2021, we have started with the knowledge which we generate in almost eight years. We started a new project called 17, which is a global recovery project, the first in human history. We make one mistake in the past. We consider that pyramids are there to build the future on that, but it, it does not work. I don't know who of you stand ever on the top of a pyramid. It's a very unstable place. And there is one more thing. Pyramid has not been built to live inside, but to die. And it is a tomb. And still, we use a pyramid as an image for the future, which is wrong. I recognize that more than a decade ago, and I start to build a new brownstone for the future. It's called 6R instead of 3. And how this 6R works, let me show it to you. Because firstly, you have to recognize that something must not become waste. 
And trust me, it's not an easy task, especially if you throw the item or the process in a garbage. But the second step is even harder than the first one, because you have to reconsider what you will do with this item. And trust me, it's really hard. But the third one is the reward. You probably fail for the first, second, or even third time. But when you succeed, you will start to build the wasteless world and the future of you and of all around you, because you realize it, what you may be dreamed about. To do so, I spent eight years to write the world first waste prevention legislation in the world because of we are living in a waste age and my aim and intention is to end this waste age and it can be done with this simple way just one page is enough to be included in every single legislation in the world because nothing that can be used or utilized again must become waste Everything must be considered primary as a pre-waste existing resource and remain in the system. The secondary use or utilization is not limited to a primary function of a product or material and can be executed by anyone respecting the regulation and safety condition. Collecting, sorting, bailing, and trade are not being considered anymore secondary utilization and if not utilized on a primary location must be offered to others before being wasted. And dear ladies and gentlemen, please understand one, there is no waste if we do not waste. And I don't know whether you will trust me, but there is not a single legislation in the world which define how waste happen, how it's being created. So this is why this part is part of the waste prevention legislation, because wasting is the name of the process in which product or material of any kind and volume become waste. In fact, wasting is a system failure and must be prevented first without any restriction or legal limitations. And please understand, wasting is not a feature of a product or material. It is a result of human behavior. And single use is one of the most frequent types of waste. I was asked many times, Mr. Rada, is there any value in waste prevention? In 2019, we pre presented for the first time a calculation which takes us almost five years to make. At the time, the v value of global waste prevention without counting war industry, crude oil industry, and waste industry, which did not provide us data, was 475 trillion US dollars per year. The interesting part is already the first year you can cut the cost of waste management by 50%. But unfortunately, in 2022, that's not true anymore. And it's very unfortunate because the value of global waste prevention increased. Firstly, in the mankind's history, one industry has a value of one quadrillion. Why? Because of the war in Ukraine. Because of the fact that not a single bullet will be used twice. And because of the fact that not a single life lost can be recovered, we can and we must pre to e-waste. So prevent e-waste to happen because this is the way which can be done. And how? If you have an old phone, smartphone, turn it into a voice to text terminal for people who cannot read the small letters anymore or who cannot listen to you because of their hearing issues. It is available. It is for free and you can do it. You can turn the old screen into a new touch screen for school. Just small changes needs to be done. You can turn old e-car battery in a backup battery system for your home, school, village. You can turn even broken hoverboard into an engine of a wheelchair or you can turn old bulb into a lamp which will you will light up with a fire. But that's not all. You can even take an old bus, tram, plane and turn it into school or village because they are so big. If you take one cruise ship, even a city will fit inside. What is interesting, just a few days ago, at beginning of June, New York State passes the right to repair bill and I don't know whether you realize that before it was not legal in the US to repair broken things. So this is why 
the waste industry is so profitable because they wrote these rules before. Because the waste industry profit means more waste, more profit. That's a second news, which is just today was published, or yesterday, sorry. Hyundai will make first pilot large-scale autonomous ship to cross across the ocean. It is already on its way. This is, you look at e-waste in a few years. So you see, if we start to prevent the waste happen, there will be no waste. For me, such a ship, it's really a city. Industry 5.0 is the first industrial evolution ever led by man, by human. It is the new mindset of people and businesses from wasteful to wasteless. What is interesting, it delivers the results without the need of capital investment and is based on the principles of systematic waste prevention. It utilizes the on the ground minds, the existing resources where people count to one of the resources, same as time and nature and everything all around us. It is based on transparency, profit sharing and efficiency. And please understand one. Industry 5.0 is not a sales tool or a buzzword for new products or technology. It's not AI. It's not a revolution. No, it is the first industrial evolution which ever man created. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the times of digitalization of our world. Our children are living in the years of digitalization of the education. And our leisure time was thanks to games, TV screens, and mobile phones digitalized a long time ago. So it looks like that the only thing which needs to be digitalized is the human himself. But if we do so, our life and our home will look like this. And this is not a mistake what you see on your screen because data don't need any light. I recognized it more than a decade ago and I decided I do not want to live on the bottom of a black hole. And I decided to build another world wasteless or the same world on which I was born. And don't worry, many joined me already, not only in the 17 project. My name is Michael Rada. I'm human. And together with me, there are already now 102 countries which own their own gate to wasteless world represented by Industry 5.0 ambassador. We are covering 80 seven percent of global population which have already the access to the tools of systematic waste prevention. The ladies and gentlemen, that's almost all. And I would like to thank you for the most valuable asset that you share with me, your time. Because we do not have any time to waste. And this is why I do believe that this keynote and webinar was the start of our cooperation. And I will see you soon on the construction site of Wasteless World. And let me face you again. So that's about e-waste. That's about the way how we can end the waste age, including the e-waste age. It is every single one of you who can prevent waste. You need this and you need to be able to work and process what you aim. And if you do not want to live on a landfill, join me because the politicians will not do. They will not deliver better future for you, but for them. And that's the difference. What you see here, here behind me, for example, just to give you an example, these are real vinyl records. To be honest, these are broken ones. Sourced directly in one of the largest factories which produce vinyl records. And in the factory, every single day, they throw away in a garbage up to 10,000 pieces because they, are, they do not fit the quality, especially the sound. To cut this out of the vinyl record, it's about six hour work by hand. And this man behind me, this is the first president of my country who created a country from nothing in 1918 already. And he's watching, and I hope he's happy to see what I do. So, Time for discussion. And let me use this opportunity and to invite you to another discussion where only questions will be asked and answered. It will be on 19th, and I am sure the host will tell you more. And 
I am really happy that we have people from all around the world. We have yeah. them from Philippines. We have them from India, from Europe, US. So this is what makes Industry 5.0 so strong. Because if I speak about wasteless world, and this is what I do, I do create wasteless world for all. This is the only aim of the last nine years. You know, I have started this journey when I was 42 years old. Today I'm 50. But I do believe I will have a peak in the wasteless world. And what is connecting us is the image of wasteless world. Because, you know, every single one of you, if I ask you, what are the three things which you see in wasteless world? I know what they will be. First will be the clean air, which you can breathe without having a face mask or a trouble that you will be ill through the through the pollution. The second one, it's clean water, which you can drink without any harm. You can swim in and you will have enough not to suffer. And the third, which will be there in your image, would be the smiling faces of people which you love. And whether there will be a car or a house, it's maybe, but the three things will be there every time. Because these three things and a work which is meaningful will make your life meaningful and you have something to add so how how we can preserve our nature you know we must be part of the nature i don't ask you to live as an animal no understand the nature listen to it touch it don't feel don't fear the touch i am in the middle of a city in one small office in front of my window, there is a small roof. And I turn this roof in a practice place for a roof garden. And I do not have a garden as a flat face surface, no. I use plastic crates, which I found obsolete in factories. I filled, filled them with soil, put different seeds inside, and just look for three years or less. How different plants behave on this roof which is not under shadow, which is direct sun in there. And it's very interesting to watch. And just now, it looks like that this year will be the last with the crates, but the next one, the owner asked me whether I can make a real garden in there. And we will. And this is how you will do. Do not fight with the nature. Try to live with it. Do not fight with the time. Don't let the time be your enemy. Be your friend. You don't need watch. Why? If you are a friend with the time, you will recognize that right now we are speaking about half an hour or 40 minutes home because you feel it inside. And all what you do, do from your heart, do with your love, love your work and everything around. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for giving us your precious time and for capturing the event so perfectly. We are sincerely grateful for you to be the part of our event and also to be the speaker of the webinar. And thank you for guiding us. And last but not the least, I thank everyone who are present today in the webinar. 